This is the second part of a two-part series on the death of Kim Jong-il and the subsequent to rise to power of Kim Jong-un. Read part 1 here. Everyone who studies North Korea remembers where they were when they learned Kim Jong-il had died. I remember that on December 18th I was talking to a South Korean friend, and jokingly told her, well, we can't predict the future. For example, Kim Jong-il may die tomorrow. The next day, just after noon, I got a message from her, Kim Jong-il died. Just as you said, Fyodor. It was a day of great contrast, for people who studied the North, it seemed like the dawn of the new age, while for most people it was just Monday. I remember that I heard the word, Kim Jong-il, only once on streets of Seoul that day. It was a big surprise for the South Korean media, too, as they received the news immediately after the noon broadcast. NBC, for example, began its broadcast with coverage of SK Group President Cho Tae won being summoned to the prosecutor's office. 42 seconds into the report, the channel announced, Chairman Kim Jong-il of North Korea is dead, and then had to throw everything into coverage of his death. They did a superb job, immediately adjusting to the sensational news. The same day they already composed a report from South Korean islands in the Yellow Sea, people were slightly nervous, but the atmosphere was calm, and from the K-industrial complex, some shop workers left their workplaces after the announcement, but many others stayed. In North Korea, the news seemingly came amid an atmosphere of unnatural calmness. Although the state television preferred to show crying people, North Koreans I talked to about the day said that after the announcement they mostly observed a brief silence before going back to their lives. The DPRK lowered flags across the country, including the one on the inter-Korean border. DPRK embassies soon followed. Chinese sellers in Dandong, a city bordering the country, mobilized to sell flowers to North Koreans, expecting them to go home soon, but no such order followed, leaving demand for flowers quite low. Meanwhile, in South Korea, President Lee Myung-bak, who learned about Kim Jong-il's death from his advisor Chan yong yu and whose 70th birthday schedule was completely wrecked by the news, convened an emergency meeting of the National Security Council. The National Army immediately went on alert. Some analysts in South Korea expressed their hopes for a better future for the North. On December 20, North Korean newspapers came out, with Kim Jong-il's portrait on the front page reaction from both China and the United States was relatively scarce, it seemed that both Hu Jintao and Barack Obama also learned the news at that very day. The DPRK state showed screenshots of TV channels across the world reporting about Kim's death. Normally they picked the largest but in case of the United States, for some reason, it was not CNN, but ABC News. Kim's death in print on December 20, North Korean newspapers came out, with Kim Jong-il's portrait on the front page. The second page was dedicated to the official statement, read by Ri Chung-hee the previous day. The third page listed the members of the funeral committee and showed a medical report about his death, he had suffered a cardiac infarction and had died from a heart attack. The third page also listed the decision of the funeral committee to preserve Kim's body in the Kum Susan Memorial Palace, to hold a period of mourning, from December 17. Notably, it started retroactively, to December 29. The funeral was to be held on December 28. Three minutes of silence were to be observed during the event, with no foreign mourners allowed to participate. All this, including even the death from a heart attack, perfectly mirrored the coverage of the death of Kim Il-sung on July 9, 1994. Like father, like son. Kim Jong-un led the funeral procession, photo, KCNA the morning period one of the first orders which came after Kim Jong-il's death was to close the marketplaces. The ban did not last long, as on December 21st some of the traders were already back to business and on December 25th the marketplaces were completely reopened. The prices, notably, remained the same, as if nothing had happened. During the morning, the military police were also mobilized to preserve order and the population was ordered not to meet in groups of more than five people. Reaction from both China and the United States was relatively scarce by that time, the DPRK still had comparatively few statues of Kim Jong-il, so authorities were puzzled as to where to conduct morning events. Usually a statue of Kim Il-sung or a pillar of eternal life dedicated to him was chosen as a substitute, but, for example, in Horyang, people met around Kim Jong-suk's statue. On December 25, the government ordered the people to write letters of loyalty to Kim Jong-un, similar to campaigns that had existed since at least the 1970s. The body lies in state the body of the great marshal was dressed in civilian clothes and covered with a simple red flag. In two days, his face was cosmetically altered to remove a black stain from his cheek, possibly skin cancer, so that his body would look more aesthetically pleasing. 
The corpse was seemingly already prepared for preservation, while later a team of specialists from Moscow were summoned to Pyongyang to finalize the process. The head of Kim Jong-il lay on a pillow marked with an unusual symbol, not bearing a resemblance to anything North Korean. Notably, a similar, if not identical pillow was used during Kim Il-sung's funeral in 1994. The coffin was surrounded by Kim jong il flowers named after the now late great commander. The entire process mirrored the funeral of Kim Il-sung, creating a sense of equality between the two. The body lay in state in a ceremony attended by top officials, but which two of his sons did not visit. Photo, KCNA The ceremony was attended by the country's top officials, as well as by several members of the Kim family. Kim Jong-il's last wife, Kim Ok, was there. There were reports that a few years later she was sent to a concentration camp with her family. Kim Jong-il's daughter, Yo Jong, was also one of the guests, while neither sons Kim Jong-nam or Kim Jong-chul were seen at the ceremony. While the leader's oldest had been something of an outcast in the family long before he was murdered in 2017, Zhang Chul likely did not show up as his presence may have cast a shadow of doubt on the position of his younger brother. Interestingly, the ban on foreigners did not extend to South Koreans, as the DPRK does not recognize the ROC as an independent nation. The late president Kim Dae-young's widow Lee Wei-ho and Hyundai Group president Hyun jang un visited Pyongyang to offer their condolences. The South Korean government sent no delegation of its own, and several members of pro-North Korean organizations did, without clearing it with the Ministry of Unification. The military police were also mobilized to preserve order speed building the cult state media faced a problem now, however, by the time of Kim Jong-il's death, Kim Jong-un had almost no established personality cult. This had to be rectified quickly. On December 20th, Rodong Sinmun spelled Kim Jong-un's name in ordinary script in the message of the second page, while the country's second newspaper, the Minju Chosun, used special bold spelling previously reserved only for Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-il. Since the latter comes out slightly later than the Rodong, we can surmise that someone issued an order to alter the spelling late in the morning on December 20th. An article on page 5 on the same day stated that the revolutionary great deeds of Ju Shape would be continued by the Pike to bloodline. Kim Jong-un was called great, and once again named his father's successor. Another problem was that Kim's first official title, Young General, was unimpressive. It was quietly taken out of circulation, being replaced by, respected vice chairman of the Central Military Commission Kim Jong-un, and then, respected, comrade Kim Jong-un. This also was not good enough, and the DPRK started to improvise. As of December 24, Kim was still merely a, vice chairman of the Central Military Commission. The next day, he also became the supreme leader of our revolutionary armed forces. On December 27, he became the highly gifted leader of our party, stayed in the army, and on the December 28, he finally got his permanent title, the supreme leader of our party, stayed in the army. It is interesting that the title, supreme leader, which is now used as a standard, first appeared in letters of condolences signed by Hanu Haryu, the leader of the Finnish Communist. Workers' Party, for Peace and Socialism, and Wahid al Aksori, the leader of the Egyptian Arab Socialist Party, and it is possible that the DPRK picked up the title from them. Given that both parties are extremely marginal, this may be the most prominent political achievement of Haryu and al Aksori in their entire political careers. Another ideological problem the country faced was that of Kim Jong un's mother, Ko Yong Wei. The biography of a Japanese-born actress was not befitting of the mother of the supreme leader, and the DPRK leadership stopped any campaigns related to her several days after Kim Jang Il's death. Finally, a new leader needed a new. It take time to compose a good poem and for the first days the DPRK promoted a poem named People, We Have General Kim Jang un composed by the literature faculty of Kim Il-sung University. The poem was not great, and soon went into obscurity. On December 26, a new slogan appeared, Let us defend respected comrade Kim Jong-un with our lives. It seems that it later became the basis for the similarly named, which is now the main him and Kim Jong-un's honor in North Korea. Nature calls one trait of the personality cult in the DPRK is that the propaganda sometimes suggests that the Kims possess, or, in some older versions, are had to possess, supernatural powers. There is a called, Commander Uses Warp, which speaks about Kim Jong-il teleporting and flying across the front line while sitting on a cloud. There are stories about Kim managing to open the door of a broken tractor despite no one being capable of it before and after. The Rodong Sinmun published similar reports about Kim Jong-il's death. 
apparently, stated the organ of the Workers' Party, there were unusual tremors on Pai Tu Mountain from December 16 to 19 and on December 19, there was a red sunset as nature hoisted a red flag in honor of the great commander. The sacred mountain of the revolution had actually started to tremble before the demise of the beloved marshal, but this small nuance remained unmentioned. Furthermore, it had snowed on a bright day from December 18th to December 19th, allegedly, the locals explained this is Kim Jong-il being sent to the heavens, and there were reports about a hawk sitting three times on a statue of Kim Il-sung before flying in the direction of Pyongyang, as well as crying owls and cranes. Understandably, the Rodong Sinmun reported nothing on the goings-on at Vyatskoi village, Russia, where Kim Jong-il was actually born. For those interested, on December 17, it was actually slightly warmer there than it had been the day before. A new leader needed a new Uncle Jang steps up apart from Ri Yong Ho. Another figure to rise in late December was Kim Jong Un's Uncle Jang Song Thaik. On December 25, he suddenly appeared in a uniform of a four star ground force general, which immediately led to speculation that he had become the country's second in command. This raises a question, though promotions to vice marshal and above are normally done on the orders of the Central Military Commission, a promotion from one to four star general requires the order of the Supreme Commander, and, as of December 25, the DPRK did not have a Supreme Commander, as Kim Jong-il was dead and Kim Jong-un was not appointed to the position. This leaves us with the mystery how this promotion was actually carried out. Possibly there was an order from the National Defense Commission and or the Central Ministry Commission of the party, but in any case, it was a breach of tradition in the somber morning atmosphere. Jang becoming a general was the only promotion to take place during the official morning period and, notably, it was not mentioned in Jang's official biography in the Rodong Sinmun in April 2012 published after he became a member of the Politburo. Kim Jong-un and his uncle Jang song fake, who was promoted not long after Kim Jong-il's death, photo, KCNA The Eight Mortals The funeral ceremony began December 28. Kim Jong-il's body was placed in a coffin draped in the flag of the Workers' Party and placed in a Lincoln Continental Limousine 1976 hearse, the same model used during Kim Il-sung's funeral. The car was accompanied by eight officials as it slowly moved across Pyongyang, from the Memorial Palace and back. Four to the right, starting with Kim Jong-un, wore civilian uniform, while four to the left wore military uniforms. The following scheme shows the composition, Kim Jong-un Supreme Leader the Coffin Ri Young Ho Chief of General Staff Jang Song Fake Vice Chairman of the NDC Kim Young Chun Minister of the People's Armed Forces Kim Ki Nam Party Secretary Kim Jong Gak. First Deputy Chief of the Main Political Department Cho Thay Bok Party Secretary Yu Tong Chuk First Deputy Chief of the Department of State Security One may notice that the list of the officials was notably different from that at the funeral. Kim Yong Nam and Cho Yong Rim were not included, instead, the DPRK version of the eight elders appeared to be the men who really ran the country. Given that by that time both the positions of Chief of the Main Political Department and Chief of the Department of State Security were vacant, all three heads of the Army and the Chief of the Secret Palace were present, as were most the powerful representatives of the state and of the party. So what was the later fate of the men who walked alongside Kim? Ri Yang Ho and Jang Song Fake were purged. Kim Yong Chun retired and was promoted to Marshal in 2016. Kim Ki Nam has led the Propaganda Department since 2016. Jang Gak became president of the Kim Il-sung Military University in 2013 and was demoted from a Politburo member to a Central Committee member in 2016. Cho Thae Bok, on the other hand, got promoted to the Politburo at the same time. Yu Tong Chuk has not been mentioned in DPRK press since 2012 he was either retired or been purged. Out of seven, then, two purged, two promoted, one retired, one demoted, and the fate of another one is unknown. The common thing about all is that none have become number two in the country or received a significant or independent position. The car was accompanied by eight officials as it slowly moved across Pyongyang. Kim Jong-un is left with all the power. After Kim Jong-il's body was brought back to the Kumsusan Memorial Palace, renamed, at the funeral, to the Kumsusan Palace of the Sun. The late Kim was praised for making the country a nuclear power and the population was instructed to follow his son. The funeral procession, photo, Pyongyang Times posthumously, Kim Jong-il received an order of the hero of the DPRK, his fourth, and, later in 2012, a Kim Il-sung order and the rank of Generalissimo. The strange will the morning ended on December 29th. On its final day, Kim Jong-un reportedly issued one of his first political orders, reinstating family responsibility for fleeing the country. 
if someone defects, exterminate his family up to the third generation, instructed the supreme leader. Although such a cruel policy was seemingly reversed later, Kim Jong-un has proven himself to take the question of escapees much more seriously than his father did. On the next day, Kim Jong-un was immediately appointed the supreme commander by the decision of the Politburo, of which, ironically enough, he still was not a member. Kim Jong-un is left with all the power The message about the event was somewhat odd. The vice chairman of the Central Military Commission of the WPK respected comrade Kim Jong-un was highly venerated as the supreme commander of the KPA. According to the will of the great leader respected comrade Kim Jong-il expressed at October 8, Juche 100, 2011, the beloved and respected comrade Kim Jong-un, the vice chairman of the Central Military Commission of the WPK, was highly venerated as the supreme commander of the KPA. The will expressed on October 8, Juche 100, 2011, is a strange addition, as such a will has never been mentioned in open documents before or after the appointment. October 8 was the anniversary of Kim Jong-il being appointed the General Secretary in 1997, his first formal position after his father's death. Notably, no celebration of it took place in 2011. We do not know what event took place on this day, but it is quite likely that it was real, otherwise, the will of Kim Jong-il would have probably been referenced without a date. It is quite likely that at the meeting, someone quoted Kim's statement from October 8 and suggested that Kim Jong-un should be appointed as supreme commander, and thus this unusual formula ended up in news. What was it about? A glimpse of decorations displayed in front of Kim Jong-il's coffin can provide us with an insight. The Generalissimo insignia displayed near Kim Jong-il's coffin, photo, Pyongyang Times. You can see two shoulder insignia in the center. DPRK News reported that these were the insignia of the Marshal of the DPRK, the rank Kim Jong-il had held since 1992. This, however, was wrong. As one can see from below, these were the insignia of the Generalissimo. The difference is small, half wreath versus wreath surrounding the star, but is clearly notable. Insignia of the Marshal of the DPRK Insignia of the Generalissimo of the DPRK Thus we may suppose that Kim Jong-il's promotion to Generalissimo, which actually happened post-mortem on February 14, 2012, was already planned in 2011. This would have mirrored Kim Il-sung's own path. The father is promoted to Generalissimo on his jubilee, while the son becomes a supreme commander and a marshal. This brings us to an interesting note. Kim Jong-il was born in 1941, but he later altered it to 1942 to create a good-looking 30-year gap with his father. The distortion of his own biography backfired. If he had not started playing with history, he would have been officially 70 years old in 2011 and could have enjoyed his promotion to Generalissimo while still being alive. Back to work the funeral was complete and the DPRK started to move back into regular political life, which included criticism of South Korea. On the final day of the year, the National Defense Commission released a message attacking Seoul for not mourning with the North. The world will see how 10 million military men and civilians, united under the great leader respected comrade Kim Jong-un, will change the sorrow into boldness, the tears into strength and will achieve the final victory, ended the message. In the message, Kim Jong-un was referred to with Kim Jong-il's old title, the great leader, suggesting he was equal to him even on a symbolic level. He still had to formally appoint himself to lead the party and the state, but in practice, he had been the king since Ri Chung he announced as the successor on December 19. Looking back at first days of Kim Jong-un's rule, we can see many of trends already begin to emerge, he was proclaimed his father's successor, and he has held absolute authority ever since, meaning that s about him being controlled by subordinates were likely nonsense from the very beginning. Kim Jong-un showed his softer attitude to marketplaces, having them reopened even before the morning was over, and later his government has implemented relatively successful economic decentralization measures. He has also shown a tougher attitude to people fleeing the country, and his rule has seen numerous crackdown on these attempts. Two ambitious men, Jang Song-fake and Ri Yong-ho, clearly exposed themselves as such during the funeral. Both were later purged. The report on the decision to suspend the cult of his mother was almost certainly a correct one, as her cult seems to almost have vanished in the DPRK. Apart from some unusual patterns in public appearances, like showing his wife to the public, meeting Dennis Rodman, and a diehard determination to perfect the country's strategic weaponry, most political and economic trends seems to have been set there, back in late December 2011. Edited by Oliver Hotham Featured Image, KCNA